Guys, welcome back to our Horizon Zero Dawn Master Machine Hunting series. Horizon Forbidden West is just days away at this point, and I've got just a couple more Zero Dawn machines left to round out this series. In this video, we're covering Bellowbax, one of the toughest early game machines. Now, all of you Horizon pros with all your endgame gear probably have no problem with Bellowbax, but you're going to want to stick around for this one anyway. That's because Bellowbacks will be back in Forbidden West, which means we're all going to be going up against them in the early game once again. So whether you're like me and you're replaying Zero Dawn to get hyped for the sequel, or you're brand new to Horizon and just trying to figure out how to take down these crazy machines, get ready to master Bellowback hunting. So Bellowbacks are actually pretty tough machines until you get late game equipment. I feel like Bellowbacks are kind of discounted in most people's minds. Maybe it's because they aren't quite as flashy as other machines like Stormbirds and Thunderjaws, or maybe it's because they're not involved in many quests, or because most of their sights are a little off the beaten trail. Whatever it is, I think pretty much all of us can relate to fighting a Bellowback at some point in the early game and saying, yeah, I think I'm going to come back to those when I have some better gear. Well, that's because they are really pretty tough for Aloy to take on before leveling up a bit and getting some better gear. If you try to take on Bellowbacks in the Nora territory using just the default bow and regular arrows that you have at the start of the game, well, good luck with that. On top of some strong melee attacks, Bellowbacks have some elemental attacks that are honestly pretty devastating also. And remember, Bellowbacks are also unique because they come in two varieties, Fire and Freeze, and you need to fight each one a little differently. Well, I've got the strategy for both, so let's dive into it. Let's start with the variety I think is a little bit easier, the Fire Bellowback. You'll see why I think the fire ones are a little easier in a minute, but first off, I think we can all agree that the obvious targets on any bellowback are the gullets under their necks and the gigantic cargo sacks on their backs. If you can damage these enough on either variety, they'll explode and deal a ton of damage. And that's important because bellowbacks actually have a pretty decent amount of health, 1600 HP to be exact, which is a lot more than any other machine you have to deal with in the early game. So the question is, how do we deal enough damage to get the gullet and cargo sack to explode? Because you actually do need to deal quite a lot of damage to them before they will. Well, if you try to do this with the regular arrows you have by default at the start of the game, it's going to be really tough. In the early game, your best damage arrows by far are precision arrows, which means we need a sharp shot bow. I'll be using the blue version here with a couple of basic handling mods, but you could use the green version too. However, I would recommend you skip to the blue one if you can, because you'll get access to tear blast arrows as well. Those won't be much help on the bellowbacks, but tear blast arrows are super useful on other machines like shellwalkers. I'll leave a link to my shellwalker video in the description if you want to learn how to use tear blast arrows. Anyway, we're going to deal damage with precision arrows, but there's a good chance you already figured that out. So what's the next step? Well, another problem is bellowbacks actually move around quite a lot, which can make it hard to get a good angle on the gullet or cargo sack. So what we need is a way to stop the bellowback from moving around so we can hit these weak points more easily and cause the explosions. My recommendation here is to shock the bellowbacks. This will stun them for a short period, making it much easier to line up shots on those vulnerable components. I prefer shocking machines with a sling, but you could use a trip caster and shock wires too. Shock wires deal more shock damage, but you have to bait the machine into them. If you want to use a sling, you'll need the blue Karja sling at a minimum to get access to shock bombs. I actually have mine modded with just freeze mods here because the base shock damage will be plenty for us. With a trip caster, you could step down to a green one and you'd be just fine. Whichever you prefer, our first step is to get the bellowback shocked. Now, before you get too excited, there's a couple more steps we want to do with a fire bellowback specifically before exploding its cargo sack. While it's shocked, we want to freeze it using either freeze bombs or freeze arrows. That's because freezing a machine gives us a massive damage multiplier when using arrows to deal damage. I prefer freezing machines with freeze arrows because they're cheaper to craft compared to freeze bombs. We'll be using a blue Karja Warbow here with a couple of basic freeze mods on it. So now that we've frozen the bellowback with some arrows, we'll take a couple of shots at the cargo sack to weaken it a bit, but we actually don't want to explode it just yet. Remember, this is a fire bellowback, and exploding the cargo sack will cause it to burn, which will remove the freeze effect. Remember, you can only have one elemental status effect at a time. So while it's still frozen, we want to take advantage of that huge damage multiplier and lay into it with precision arrows. You'll see that this really knocks down its health pretty fast. Now once the freeze effect wears off, you should have dealt enough damage to hit the cargo sack one or two more times to cause the explosion and finish it off. So that's how you deal with fire bellowbacks, but what about freeze ones? Well, the optimal strategy is slightly different. Whereas the fire bellowback was weak to freeze, the freeze bellowback is not. But the first step is the same. We want to get it stunned by shocking it. Now instead of freezing it while it's stunned, you just want to get in as many shots as possible on its cargo sack. Remember, dealing damage to a stunned or tied down machine will make that status effect wear off very quickly. So the bellowback is going to get up pretty fast, but you should have enough time to get in a few good shots with your precision arrows before it does. When it does get up, it's best to shock it again straight away so you can get back to dealing damage to that cargo sack. With a couple more shots, the cargo sack will explode, dealing a bunch of damage to the bellowback and also freezing it. 
Now you want to lay into it with precision arrows to deal as much damage as possible before the freeze effect wears off. If you aren't able to kill it while it's frozen the first time, you could shock it again and try to explode the gullet, or you could start burning it with fire arrows. Remember, the freeze bellowback is weak to fire, so unlike the fire bellowback, a burn effect will actually do a decent amount of damage to a freeze one. Alright, that was a lot of steps, so let's see how to put it all together in the live combat. Okay guys, we're here at a bellowback site. This is the one that's in the northeast of the Nora territory, which spawns one fire and one freeze bellowback, so that's, that'll be a good demo for us to see both. My difficulty level is very hard, that's what I'm using for all the videos in this series. And then I'll also show you real quick my outfit is the Nora Survivor Medium. And I'm picking that, it's, it's a really great cheap um, early game outfit, mid game outfit, and it has good like elemental resistance across the board. So having the fire and freeze resistance against the Bellowbacks will definitely help us out with their elemental attacks. And then I've put a basic melee resist mod on there because they have some melee attacks too. Um, but speaking of the elemental attacks, in the bottom left here, I'm gonna tee up our elemental resistance potions, which help a whole lot against any kind of elemental attack. So that's gonna be big for us against the Bellowbacks, especially in the early, early game. So we'll go for the fire one first, but I'll actually put on both of these potions. And the first thing we want to do, remember, is shock them with some shock bombs. Take three shock bombs to do this. So now that he's shocked, I'm going to go for some freeze arrows. And we'll just freeze him while he's stunned. And just kind of keep avoiding this watcher. We'll get a couple shots on his cargo sack here. And you can hit them on the bottom part, this black part here. You can hit that, and that'll work. Um, but I'm not going to hit it again. I've hit it twice, and then I know one more arrow is going um, to blow it up. So I'm going to actually just hit him in the body while he's frozen here, because we still get that big damage multiplier. And notice I'm not fully drawing my bow. Uh, you don't need to fully draw your bow to get full damage. So you can shoot a lot faster if you get comfortable just partially drawing. So you can see he's almost dead already. And there's our potions helping us out against his fire. So I'll, we'll blow this up now. One more shot to blow it up. One more, because he's not frozen anymore. We're not getting that multiplier. So there we go. We got the freeze one taken care of. So now with the... Or sorry, we have the fire one taken care of. So with the freeze one, we'll shock him too. And we don't want to freeze him because he's resistant to freeze. So we'll just take this opportunity to get some shots on the, uh, get out of here, watcher. Get some shots on the cargo sack. And actually we were able to blow it up there. You can see it killed one of those watchers for us, which is kind of nice. So we'll just hit him in the body while he's still frozen. Again, don't have to fully draw the bow. And I'm using Hunter Reflexes skill to get this jump and slow-mo effect. But if you'd rather, you can also use concentration like this. And I'm going to be able to kill him here while he's frozen, but I'll actually let him unfreeze. I'll show you, you can use the fire arrows against them as well. That's a pretty effective strategy with the freeze ones, because they're weak to fire. And that'll actually probably kill him. But we can take a shot at him in the gullet there to finish him off. As you guys can see, these strategies are really effective against both varieties of the Bellowbacks. Plus, I think it's pretty cool that you can use pretty cheap early game gear to pull this off. Remember, the trick is the order in which you do these steps. With the Fire Bellowback, the pattern is Shock, Freeze, Damage Cargo Sack, Damage Body, then Explode the Cargo Sack to finish it off. With the Freeze Bellowback, we have a slightly different pattern. Shock, Damage Cargo Sack, Shock again if needed, Explode the Cargo Sack, then burn to deal damage or shock again so you can focus on the gullet. If you can get these patterns down, I think you'll find that the bellowbacks are a lot more manageable than you thought. Also remember that you can play around with using a tripcaster to shock them instead of the sling and shock bombs. As you progress, you'll want to shift using shock arrows instead or even skipping over the shock step entirely, for example going straight to freeze with a fire bellowback. Similarly, to conserve resources, you'll eventually want to transition to hardpoint arrows instead of precision arrows once you have a hunter bow that can deal more damage. If the shocking step isn't working out for you, you could also play around with using a rope caster to tie down the bellowbacks instead of shocking them. Overall, the key to dealing with bellowbacks is to immobilize them briefly somehow so that you can get easier shots on those vulnerable components. 
All right, guys, that's my master machine hunting guide for bellowbacks. Like I said earlier, bellowbacks will be back in Forbidden West, so I hope this video helped you get a handle on them. For all the Horizon pros out there, I'd be interested in hearing your favorite ways to deal with bellowbacks, so go ahead and comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, or if you learned something, hitting that like button is always appreciated and helps me out. To finish out this series, I've saved my favorite machine for last, the Fireclaw, so make sure you're subscribed to see that video soon. Forbidden West will be here in just a few days, and I'm so psyched for it. You guys know I'll be continuing this series for all the new machines, so make sure you're subscribed for that too. Plus, I'm planning to start doing tips and tricks videos for all the new things in Forbidden West. Maybe even leave me a comment if you've got ideas for videos you'd like to see as you start playing the game. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.